What a such a beautiful Twitch interaction. Okay, we're gonna watch Jobbery now. We're gonna watch Jobbery take on Andrew Motherfucking Tate. The decay of Andrew Tate. TikTok's worst alpha male. The reason I talk about women the way I do is because I hold myself to such a high standard as an individual. Because females have low IQs, right? Because women are stupid. True. Well, what? It's fine if I do. I'm a man. They want to beat me. You're the man of the day. Yeah, I'm sorry. The decay of Andrew Tate, TikTok's worst alpha male, implies the existence of TikTok's best alpha male. And that's right. It's me. I'm TikTok's best alpha male. Let's go. I'm always the man of the day. I'm a chip on the I gotta pee, I'll be back. The alpha male can be defined as a man tending to assume Hold a on. dominant or domineering role in a social or professional situation. Or this. As of late, YouTube and TikTok have seen a dramatic uptick in content concerning the manosphere, an online network of content creators with a central focus on men's issues. While ranging in ideology and presentation, the one thing all these media personalities tend to have in common is hating women. Being that women are the physical manifestations of this phenomenon they can't be trusted to handle anything of greater responsibility anything of greater importance than daily household chores and taking care of babies. Marketing content towards lonely teenage boys in need of a father figure has proven to be a surprisingly profitable racket for a slew of failed pickup artists. Go for a no, I can't. Go for a drink. Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Take the Fresh and Fit podcast, for example. Comprised of Walter Weeks and Myron Gaines, the two buddies offer wise words along the lines of financial, fitness, and especially romantic advice to their audience. Hope to transform boys into men by navigating them through the treacherous world of dating when really they just berate female guests to their face you've definitely disqualified yourself from a large portion of the same very men that you want to attract that's really rude Despite their many controversies and track record of questionable takes, Walter and Myron are thriving. Sinking their teeth into every major platform, Fresh and Fit have taken the internet by storm, influencing a new generation of kids one embarrassing snippet at a time. And I'm tired of women out here telling dudes, small dick energy, small dick energy, you're It's just so sad that, uh, uh, <laughs> it is just so fucking sad, okay, that, Dudes are so cucked and so incredibly embarrassingly awful with women that like the main dude representatives and dude educators are just openly demonstrating their fucking insecurities on the timeline. And people are like, fuck yeah, King. Fuck yeah, King. You're right. These women are bitches, bro. How dare they say I have small dick energy. It's crazy, dude. It is crazy. What the fuck happened? What happened to men? Okay. Seriously, not to get on my Jordan Peterson shit, but like, what happened to manly men? You can't even be a fucking decent woman and not be a slut. I'm not going to the Lamborghini dealership with 300 bands to pay 200,000, uh, three, for, uh, fucking pay 300,000 hours for a Lambo with 200,000 miles on it, bro. I'm sure these clips are ridiculous and they may be fun to laugh at, but they shouldn't be written off as these warped ideas still resonate with millions of people and shape online discourse. Reinforcing decade old perspectives, influencers adjacent to fresh and fit confirm the biases of their overwhelmingly male audience.
audiences, allowing these men to make sense of the terrible card they've been dealt in life by legitimizing hateful rhetoric at the expense of women. The age-old dilemma of should I go to therapy or pay a bald millionaire thousands of dollars to legitimize my dated worldviews, a concept of which no man has benefited more than the one I'd like to explore today. The biggest pillar of the alpha male community, Andrew Cobra Tate. I see myself as superior. Bugatti! Bugatti! Bugatti boys! That's perfectly fine. Pack a fucking bag. I always mark a disabled base. I'm not a bad person. Most people are slow and stupid. I'm fast. So I'll walk around my house with a Bugatti! Sword. This is gonna be a long one, so let's go ahead and hear from today's sponsor. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. What Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is a okay, dollar. I'm skipping this. Damn. I'm too smart to read. I need to be driving a supercar and fucking fighting. Fucking a bunch of hoes and champagne hoes. going crazy. I walk into hell and the devil's like, oh, I'm gonna burn you. I'm not gonna do shit. Andrew Tate is a 35-year-old kickboxer, millionaire, playboy, crypto enthusiast, sword wielder, book hater, and disgraced reality TV star turned lifestyle guru. Sitting at about half a million subs on YouTube, Andrew prides himself on delivering hard-hitting truths about women, business, and reality to his army of dedicated Fans. I guarantee there would be less divorce, happier families, and a better society as a whole if the women could only marry the men their father says they could marry. You're a fat, ugly sack of shit. Therapy is not action. Therapy is sitting and crying and complaining. If you feel depressed, you go to the gym. While a few of his more notable posts have made the rounds on Twitter in the past, it wasn't until recent that Andrew really began to hit his stride and make a name for himself as an influencer, thanks to the help of Twitch and TikTok. With moments like these being posted left and right by a multitude of fan pages, it's no wonder the top G has become so talked about. Have you ever seen a Chinese person working for someone who wasn't Chinese? <laughs> I love this clip. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, long story short, he is I think Andrew Tate and Alex Jones are of the similar variety. Okay. Like, obviously, Alex Jones has like significantly more um, sustainability, traditional media backing for a very long time. But like, they would be phenomenal entertainers if we had the capacity to comprehend as a society that they're just faking it. You know what I mean? They would be brilliant performance artists. If they weren't literally the, like, if they weren't the person that they are actually actively uh, portraying themselves as. Okay? Asian viewership plummeting? Wait, what? It is absolutely insane. But while some may brush off such ridiculous sound bites as satire, treat him as a joke, or outwardly challenge his theories to his face, others look to him as the second coming of Jesus Christ himself, spending hundreds, thousands of dollars to join what is essentially just a glorified Discord server, all made possible by the millions of loyal followers he's gained in an impressively short amount of time. A cult of meat-riding zealots who value the words and opinions of a man who is currently under investigation by the Romanian police because of the human trafficking, in which he responded by calling the accuser soy. soy. Man. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves, because after all, this is a very well-liked individual. As shocking as it may be, Andrew rates pretty high on the bald guy likability chart, at least within very specific online communities. To his critics, however, Andrew is an abomination, spearheading a socially dangerous movement, the self-proclaimed king of toxic masculinity. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a Hassan Piker mention in there, but no Hassan Piker critis critic in there. Whether he's writing depression off as a myth, questioning the legitimacy of the 2020 election results, or spouting oddly sexist observations that are just completely wrong. Well, it's been proven that the smartest people in the world are men. See, that's but, the thing. Yeah. I think we're that's been proven. Is some issues. That's, proven no, how? that's been, that's been proven. proven. That's who? been proven. How? It, it, read the study. It's more likely men what are study? out there. Read the study. Google it. What You're are you if I googled are men smarter than women and literally every single study says there's no difference. I'm not this is not sexist because I'm saying the most stupid But I think I, I think it's wrong. Like based on everything, I just think it's wrong. like there's like uh, okay, cool. studies have pop up. It's clear that Andrew Tate has layers, but to understand who Andrew Tate is, we must first know where he comes from. So I suggest you sit tight, strap into your Bugatti Chiron, and prepare yourself for a deep dive into pure insanity. This is my fucking world, and you exist in my world. If you don't want to play that game, shut the fuck up. Or I'm gonna hurt you. 
for those that don't know yep. who you are, yep. it is pretty wild when you make Dave Portnoy seem reasonable. And like only a couple forces on this planet have been able to do that. Uh, one of them is obviously Andrew Tate. And then the other one is the Republican Party when they decided to ban abortion outright and criminalize it. Like, I can't think of any other instance where like Dave Portnoy across the board came across like a like a genuinely like a reasonable person. It, crazy. I've been living under a rock. Yeah. Can you please tell the people who Andrew Tate is? Okay, well, I've lived an eclectic life, right? So I've, I've lived many different lives. I like, to, I like to think the reason I'm so wise is because I've lived a thousand human years. So I've done a lot of different things. I've been broke, I've been rich. I was a professional athlete. I was a webcam pimp. I've done it all. Emory Andrew Tate III was born on December 1st, 1986 at Walter Reed Army Hospital in Washington, D.C. The eldest of two siblings, Janine and Tristan, the latter of whom we'll be discussing quite a bit it, and the former being estranged from the other two. Uh, because she's a lip. Talk to me. Lives in America, you know, full left-wing BLM crazy. Thinks that I exploit women because of my business. You know, she's just a hater. I have nothing bad to say about just my a sister. Hater. She just doesn't talk to me. We just don't talk. I haven't spoken properly in years. Wish her all the best. I don't know, but she lives in fucking Kentucky somewhere. I don't know. That's right. According to both Tristan and Andrew, their sister refuses to speak to either of them. Gee, hater. I don't wonder what could have caused that little tip. My sister and I, we don't really talk. We don't talk because she goes to feminist rallies and believes Trump's a racist. Dude, it is kind of it is kind of remarkable that Andrew Tate did so much for chinless guys. By the way, like I haven't seen chinlit representation on the main this hard. I haven't seen people riding for a chinlit like Andrew Tate this hard since fucking Leafy got banned. Okay, I mean, my God, it, it's kind of crazy. I know. How can Andrew Tate have a low IQ sister? She lives in America and she's not very smart. Arguing with her, talking to her is annoying because her points are baseless and she's low IQ. Their father, on the other hand, was a professional chess player. An achievement both Tate brothers have always been known to laud and appreciate. Our father was a professional chess player driving from chess tournament to chess tournament in a Pontiac Sunbird. Sometimes he won, sometimes he lost. A lot of the time he slept in the car. Had a couple thousand here maybe, but then he had to play chess with it for the next three or four months. Driving across America from California to New York in a busted up Pontiac Sunbird, playing chess and winning games. While Andrew was still very young, his family moved from DC down to the south side of Chicago. Bouncing around poorer areas of Illinois before making the jump to Luton, England, where all three siblings would be raised. However, not all was well within the Tate family household. When, when my mom and dad split up, uh, we moved to England and my sister stopped talking to my dad because my, obviously my mom was upset because he split up and my dad cheated and my sister stopped talking to that. Cheated. Yeah. <laughs> and me, me and my, and me and my brother, me and, me and, me. Can we just explain the quotation, she dude? Philip Pline is like, when I see a motherfucker wearing Philip Pline, I immediately know everything I need to know about them, okay? This brand is the perfect, and I mean perfect brand for guys like Andrew Tate, okay? That's all I'm going to say. If you don't know anything about the brand, don't worry about it. If you know anything about the brand, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. If you're like a partial owner of a restaurant, of a sequence of restaurants and nightclubs, Every single one of them has never turned profit and never will. There's always shady back-end deals going on. And you're rocking fucking, you know, yeah, rhinestone skull uh, uh, Philip Pline, okay? Okay, we can explain it. We'll explain cheating. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll come back to it in a second. I mean, she should have expected it. I mean, just well, who it was. you know. He walks in the door. My mom's like, Emery, where you been? It's been two months. I don't know where you've been. What is this? I've gone through your clothes. There's a picture of some bitch in your. Did and my dad, my dad had been home for forty two minutes, and he'd just go, "Sorry, son, she won't shut up." Walked out again. <laughs> Why See does you he think this months. is cool? With the move coming off the heels of the divorce, his parents. It's kind of wild that he like tells this story like as though it's it's a cool one. Am I crazy? I feel like that's neglect. You know what I mean? I look at a story like that and I think, wow, this guy was neglected by his father. But he's like, no, my father was so fucking sick. Like <laughs> he was just like kind of awful to, to my mom. And I 
And I learned from that. I was like, I want to be awful to all women. This had gone their separate ways by the time Andrew was just four years old. It was arranged that Andrew's mother would look after the children in England, while his father stayed back in the U.S. to compete in chess tournaments. I mean, that does a decision explain a lot. that, one way or another, it directly affected the trajectory of Andrew's life. I don't think I was necessarily too upset by it. You know, I was, I was still, my father was very realistic with me and he said, look, I'm still going to see you, but you're going to England. It is what it is. So I don't think I was particularly upset by it. I would definitely wouldn't say I was traumatized by it. Oh, dude, what do you mean, brother? What the fuck? You got forced to live in England, Luton of all motherfucking places. That's like, who wouldn't be traumatized by that? You know what I mean? That's like, that, that is child abuse. Taking your child out of Gary, Indiana and, and sending his ass over to England. I mean, that's, that's child abuse. But it did alter my life tra trajectory because I lost my chess coach. Andrew has always taken the art of chess very seriously, incorporating its skill and intricacy into his own business practices and symbolism into his own branding. Having such an outlet diminished at such a young age must have been tough, but it wouldn't be long before he figured out how to channel his energy into another skill, one that by his own admission would be of great use no matter where he went. With fighting is something you, you internalize, and for that, something from the me that was interesting to have something that i've always got with me at all times so that's that's the reason i was interested in it if that makes sense as opposed to other sports where you need all this other shit for it to even be relevant it's safe to say Andrew's passion for fighting has remained a massive part of his character, dating all the way back to the day he was born. If you believe this unhinged biography, I guess he wrote himself? Two weeks overdue, I was nose breathing already as the doctor held me upside down by my heels and my right fist was- Bro, you want to be Kim Jong-un so bad, bro. This is like, this is straight up, this is straight up Jusha shit, okay? Like- autobiographies that like go crazy about like unimportant parts of your life and try to literally reinforce that that deity that you are yeah he's he's a jusha guy he's a jusha boy you know inside my mouth Kim Jong -un is a top the G. doctor pinched don't my forget that to get a response and I growled knitting my brow and trying to crane my head up to see who had attacked me the doctor paled shocked at my defensive powers I did not cry <laughs> that's awesome man on the side of working to be fair like once again even in that sentiment alone there is like um there is a hidden underlying element of humor because, like, as a wrestling character, or as, like, a totally made-up character, that's like a Dr. Disrespect-style uh, moment. If he wasn't, if he didn't take himself so seriously, okay, and if he wasn't, like, constantly being, like, as misogynistic as he humanly can, like, uh, writing for misogyny as aggressively as he did... And if he toned it down as an entertainer, like you can see that that is, I don't know. I just can't like stop thinking about people as performance artists. You know what I mean? That in and of itself is like funny. It's a funny thing to write about yourself. A few odd jobs, Andrew grew to hone his boxing and martial arts skills, and by 2009 had gone on to win the International Sport Karate Association Full Contact Cruiserweight Championship. I understand this may sound like I'm speaking another language if you're like me and have never followed anything resembling kickboxing in your life, but anyone interested in the sport, especially around this time, would certainly come to know Andrew on somewhat of a significant scale. At one point, Andrew was ranked number one at his weight in all of Europe. Though he lost his first world championship to Jean-Luc Benoit, he contested the results and beat Benoit in a rematch just three months later in Luton where he officially became champion. Securing his second ISKA world title in 2013, Andrew traveled the world as a professional kickboxer. I'll spare you the details because frankly his athletic achievements don't concern much of this video. Regardless, after initially retiring at 28, Andrew eventually came out of retirement and famous challenged Jake Paul to a fight in 2020, sparking a feud that's lasted ever since. I will fight you any day of the fucking week. I live in the real fucking world, Jake. I will take a few weeks break from living my retired life to kick the living fuck out of a fucking goofy, fucking entitled dickhead 
like you. He runs with this whole thing like, what color is your Bugatti? Andrew, like, it's not cool to tell kids that they need a Bugatti to be cool. My, like, this is the, Jake Paul's the funniest person to say this. Can we just take a brief moment? Just a brief moment. Take a breath and just think about who the person who's saying those words is, okay? My Bugatti that I have is in a Morgan Stanley bank account, compounding interest and hundreds of millions. There you go. He also immediately followed it up with the douchiest fucking thing you can say, regardless, okay? Like, he couldn't even hold the act for like three and a half seconds before saying one of the douchiest things I've ever fucking heard a human say. It's great. Millions of dollars. So that's that's cooler than having a fucking Bugatti. It's kids who it's virgins. Kids who are virgins who think by watching him they will get. But laid. then he follows up with this take, which is true. That's who his audience is. But he's but I think he's training them to to not get laid. And that's the problem. Exactly. Like I no, want exactly. them to get the, laid. They're, they're pissed off at girls because they've never gotten laid. And they think by being this alpha male and copying this douchebag who wears giant fucking aviators indo indoors <laughs> on his fucking podcast, they think that's going to get him some pussy. Like, no, his Andrew Tate's fans are all virgins. And they're watching him <laughs> to try to get laid, but they're going to get spit on and slapped by a girl. That's what's going to happen. See, Andrew may have been a world champion, but that's, that's true. not where he earned his millions. Andrew Tate consistently offering W's to some of the worst people in media. Like, literally, I've never seen someone so consistently hand off W's to some of the worst motherfuckers in media, okay? If Jake Paul has the moral high ground, you are fucking gone, son. You've done the worst thing you could have done. Look what you did. You made people agree with Jake fucking Paul, dude. Like, that's like s multiple layers worse than fucking Dave Portnoy, okay? A person that has quite literally built a fucking media career. At least Logan Paul sometimes has like agreeable takes every now and then. Logan Paul will like pop off on BLM, you know what I mean? And everyone's like, wow, oh my God, he's crazy. That white boy is crazy. It's like, like, Jake has none of that. I've never heard this motherfucker ever get a dub in a conversation until that moment where I'm like, well, there you go. After he hung up his gloves, he needed a way to make money and occupy the time he once spent in the ring. So he continued his career in the public eye, this time by joining the 17th season of the UK's Big Brother in 2016, exerting his famous alpha male dominance over every last member of the house by basically being too afraid to talk to anyone properly. Well, who the hell's actually nominated in me? Here he gets on with everyone. So I, they don't, they're not going to understand. No, no, but right Jackson, now... Jackson, Right with the dynamics. Dude, this is unhint. Dude, British reality TV is so psychotic. I'm sorry. These people look fried, brother. What the fuck? They literally look like they all got deep fried. What is this, dude? What the fuck? Why did she put white lipstick on? It makes the tan look so much worse. Why? Oh my God, dude. Oh my Lord. Are going on in the house, I definitely think Marco's going to be the better choice. We don't, and well, we're going to do a vote. Up. We're going to do a vote on this one. Yeah, Marco, yeah, Marco. Vote. It's literally so funny to see Andrew Tate, a guy who's hailed for the Patrick Bateman like energy he supposedly exudes, being talked over and ignored by everyone in the room. After watching so much footage of this guy talk, it's, it's kind of refreshing. He seems kind of shy. I don't know. Everyone else is like interacting, and he just kind of chimes in occasionally with, like, no, we should do this. Oh. I think, no, I think we should. Maybe this is before he got his giant ego. But unfortunately, this reign didn't last long, as Andrew would soon become the first house member to be evicted a whopping six days after the show began. Big oh. Brother has called Andrew to the diary room. Due to events in the outside world, Andrew has had to leave the Big Brother house. <gasps> what? Oh my God, that's the first one out. 
That's right, Andrew Tate lasted almost two weeks less than even Sam Pepper. I don't know what it is with absolute freak shows going on the British Big Brother, but someone should probably look into that. With such little time actually spent on the show, navigating the scene and making awkward conversation with other house members, you must be wondering, oh, why'd he leave so soon? Well, it depends who you ask. If you ask Channel 5, it has to do with some outside activity, accompanied by a leaked video of Andrew seemingly lashing a woman with a belt. Now, both parties have since defended the video as consensual and that the belt didn't actually hurt her. Before Tate shared an image of the girl holding the belt and posing with a tattoo reading Tate's property on her pubic region. I'm not going to show the video here because it still makes me uncomfortable and there are a few other abuse allegations <laughs> we'll be sure and cover later. According to him, the real reason he was kicked off the show was because of his master plan. The producers were too afraid of him enacting. Bro, this motherfucker's had a master plan since 2016 when he was on Big Brother. Just like the second, uh, the second coming was going to happen in his master plan. And then it fucking fell flat on its face. Oh my lord. To quote Andrew, I had an amazing master To quote the Chapo boys who covered this for some fucking weird reason. None of these other motherfuckers have a wizard on their team. Okay, so... Much respect to Andrew Tate on that front. At least he has a literal wizard slash magician on his team. A fact that not a lot of people bring up, which is weird, except we've brought it up because his magician has cursed me, if you remember. Um, but the only other group of individuals that I know uh, that have brought up the fact that Andrew Tate has a magician in his squad is the Chavo Boys. Yeah, his wizard said I was haram. But, you know, that's, you got to respect that. People don't actually have wizards anymore, and that's fucked up. What's your plan? And the producers of the show were worried that if I did such an amazing plan and got caught, that it was going to kick off in a big way. Real shame we never got to see it. Always a little hard to know exactly what Andrew means, considering his bizarre relationship with words. Which leads us to another signature aspect of Andrew Tate, his infamous persona. Whether or not Andrew is playing some kind of character or saying these things to be satirical may be clear to some, but remains undetermined in the eyes of other spectators. Which is reasonable enough, it's hard for any normal person to watch this and to assume he isn't joking. If I were to get on a plane and I were to, that plane was to fly into the eye of a hurricane, there was a 50% chance of it crashing. I'd want a male pilot because I think that males are better under stress and under pressure. I think they're less likely to get emotional in the, in the in a life or death situation. That's why they make better soldiers. Only issue is he isn't joking, at least not according to him. I mean what I say, but I'm funny. But it's certainly definitely authentic. I might be delivering things in a, in a more dynamic way depending on the setting but all in all that's basically pretty much what i'm like this is the real me i have a showbiz version but it's all it's all very real these are the things i say these are the things i believe these are the things i talk about in my private networks i just don't talk about them here to public, I don't talk about them nearly as deep or as advanced. While his diehard supporters may jump at the chance to dismiss some of his more offensive language as nothing more than crude humor, Andrew himself has openly stated the contrary, insisting that every take, every opinion he lays out in front of us reflects his genuine beliefs. Now, he may lean into the douchebag persona from time to time by use of hyperbole or by getting a massage during a debate with XQC, but that doesn't mean his words represent anything other than his true school of thought. And anyone who may imply otherwise is both enabling harmful rhetoric and dismissing a major part of Andrew's identity. In fact, even he would consider it offensive. I'm genuinely confused. So when the camera's off, yes. I, I stop believing the things I, I, I've lived. That is true. Andrew. I stop believing the things I say. And Only a person with a low IQ would even contemplate that's a possibility. So when someone comes along and goes, he's an actor, what is the logic fail? He isn't playing a character, uh, this isn't satire, and the more people willing to write him off as such are only aiding to normalize this kind of language going unchallenged as it gains traction in the mainstream. You don't go to the gym to get strong, to just be weak 
on in secret. It, yeah. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Besides, this kind of behavior from Tate is nothing new. Sure, he may have only risen to online notoriety over the past few months, but he's been known to grace tabloid headlines since before his fans exited the womb. And I know Andrew's fans may roll their eyes, but I have to give another trigger warning here, as this next segment will be discussing Andrew's various brilliant takes on sexual harassment. And by brilliant, I mean god-awful. In October of 2017, Andrew went on a bizarre rant that would become rightfully chastised by celebrities and news publications all over Europe, beginning with the assertion that women coming out against Harvey Weinstein shouldn't qualify as victims if they, quote, exchange sex for opportunity. Tweeting, Harvey, creep? Obviously. But women have been exchanging sex for opportunity for a very long time. Some did this or an abuse. Used. Continuing, if you put yourself in a position to be raped, you must bear some responsibility. With sexual assault, they want to put zero blame on the victim whatsoever. Yeah, that's the problem with sexual assault nowadays. Not enough with victim blaming. That's solved it. And that's great, man. Every time I see this fucking quote, it still blows my goddamn mind, okay? Andrew continued before going on to compare women to inanimate objects. If I left a million dollars outside my front door, when it got stolen, people would say, why was it there? Irresponsible. I can say it. Nobody should steal. It's wrong. And everyone will agree. But still, very little sympathy per my bad decision pre-thievery. A comparison so obviously egregious, I don't think you need me to sit here and explain what's wrong with it. Dude, no, it, actually, no, it is great to explain this, in my opinion, uh, okay? Because... It is at the heart, okay? It is at the heart of so much incel commentary. People literally do not understand that they treat women as objects and very openly state that they treat women as objects by directly comparing them to objects, something you would never do with men, okay? That's just it. That's why... That's why... So many of the fucking fresh and fit boys in the manosphere motherfuckers, like so many of them, whenever they talk about women, they regularly use like Bugatti, Lamborghini, like a pile of cash. These might be objects of desire, but they're still fucking objects. Okay. I have to, I don't know how to describe this to people that don't see it, but like, that's not an object, dude. That's a person. Okay. But if your starting point is like, you know, women are comparable to objects, then yeah, your brain is so fucking broken that you're probably not going to get it. Miraculously, finding a way to shift the blame away from women for a second to attack immigrants instead. All within the same unhinged stream of consciousness. While liberals scream that nobody should women can walk around naked, and men shouldn't look you import waves of third world migrants, but that's a different part entirely. I'm not even sure what point he was even trying to make. No, he was saying that migrants, third world migrants are rapists. Nice. Andrew's brain has been rattled by so many concussions over the years, I'm surprised you can even string a sentence together at Which all. Which of course is hilarious considering that he's a fucking immigrant, but you know, he said third world immigrant, so obviously it's not him. He came from Gary, Indiana. Finishing off this deranged diatribe that quite literally no one asked for with the conclusion pretending women are blameless and men shouldn't rape is stupid. A profound and eye-opening take that should concern you, considering this man isn't exactly the fringe X-reality TV schmuck he once was. He's now one of the trendiest and most well-respected influencers of today. More Googled than even Mr. Beast, revered among the manosphere as a beacon of truth shining bright in a sea of woke nonsense. Even as he's weaponizing child illness against a desperate father. What happened is some guy, some leftist guy got upset by my Twitter and attacked my Twitter and attacked me personally for about a good hour. I was ignoring him for about a good hour. He said something like, 
uh, if I had your kind of money, my son wouldn't be in trouble. And then I replied, well, what's wrong with your son? John Rosenberg is an award-winning cartoonist known for a variety of web comics he's produced over the years. One of his sons has cerebral palsy, and a few years ago was accepted for a life-changing surgery that had the potential to treat his condition. The only issue was, as one could assume, the procedure wouldn't be cheap. But with John having a decent following online, he decided to set up a GoFundMe to provide the means needed for his son to get surgery. This was Noble really, cause that like pretty much anyone on the planet could up. support, other than one man, Cobra Tate. After the two shared a heated back and forth in October 2017, a big month for Andrew, I guess, John remarked that if only he had the same fortune as Andrew, he'd be able to pay for his son's surgery no problem. To which Andrew responded with, Do you feel like a failure that the amount you need to help your own son is less than a quarter than I spend on my five cars? I will help you if you ask. It's nothing to me. Your comic books have failed but I am a success. Ask nicely and I'll save your son. Going on to doubt the existence of his child's medical condition entirely, falsely accusing John of lying about his son's cerebral palsy before repeatedly insisting he begged him for money. But in reality, John responded to this little offer with, you can take your money and shove it up your superior asshole, cobra potato. Come punch me already. So, you know, I, I wouldn't exactly call that begging. Plus, unbeknownst to Tate, John had already reached his goal with a over a thousand people raising $65,000 in just a week, all before the top G ever extended his selfless offer. But that didn't stop him from taking credit and reveling in the glory provided by his brainwashed fans. Retweeting one post that- Bro, that's so fucking- Oh my god, that makes me so mad. That is so- Oh, it, It's like everything I fucking hate about the internet where you can just like, no matter what happens, you could just change the dynamic of any given, any particular circumstance, no matter how awful it is, to, to benefit yourself. It is like truly fucking evil. Oh, ah! Ah! read, Andrew, the hero we don't deserve but badly need. As far back as this exchange may have been, it's important to realize just how little has changed over the course of so many years. I love that the to the fucking ape-brained idiots is like, fight him. Bro, Andrew Tate would probably still fucking beat my ass, dude, okay? He's a fucking professional kickboxer. I have no fight training. What the fuck is wrong with you fucking dumb ape-brained idiots where it's like, uh, dude, fight him then. Oh, no, I mean, I admit it. Like, I, I've never fought professionally, dude, okay? I've been in a lot of fights. I've won some. I've lost some, okay? I've never, I'm not like a fighter. I'm not an organized, I've never done organized uh, combat sports. Also, just because he's a good fighter doesn't necessarily mean he's exactly uh, well composed, especially considering that we had like a normal conversation where he got a little bit of light pushback and he fucking lost his shit. So clearly, it's not like he's in the best mental state regardless. You know what I mean? World champion in the minors, though. I think your size a couple months of training, you fuck them up. Dude, you guys are fucking insane. Twitch chatters are so dumb, okay? I've talked about this before. This is the D3 college baller reference again. He's trained you or not. He will beat you probably 90% of the folks he encounters. That doesn't make him not susceptible to the top of the hour at break. Fuck you! You brought up a good point, and you, what did you have to do? You have to use my good point, bring it back, and remind everybody, and then fucking use that as a top of the hour debate, Okay? Like, the thing is, I could beat 90% of chat's asses, okay? That doesn't change anything. Like, that doesn't make me a better person, okay? Like, nobody thinks this way in the real world, I hope. <laughs> You're insane if you think that. Not me, I'm a fucking beast, Azan.
Anyway, at the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars over free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. Here's what I'm going to have right now. Years. In 2022, Andrew Tate is just as much of a scumbag narcissist. Thank you, Transphobia Phobic, and thank you, Brenergy, for the five and six gifted subs. As he was half a decade ago. His fans rallied behind his provocative words back then, just as they do now. Contributing to the harassment of a father who only wanted to provide for his family. A father taking action to help his own son is a sentiment you'd think Andrew would be able to understand. If he had even a modicum of sympathy or compassion for anyone that wasn't himself. But as evident by his views on depression, we already know that is isn't the case haunted house right you have two people in two haunted houses one believes in ghosts and one doesn't you hear some noise in the night the wind blows right the man who believes in ghosts is like oh no a ghost now he's scared the guy who doesn't believe in ghosts goes wind whatever and goes back to sleep do you understand that it's the belief that gives it power right if you don't believe in ghosts Brilliant. the ghost can't hurt you if you don't believe in depression you can't become depressed. And I refuse to believe in something that's gonna weaken me. Why would I believe in something that's gonna weaken my ability to deal with problems in life? Why would yeah. I about a month prior to the GoFundMe situation gang. and the Weinstein gang, tangent, gang. Andrew Tate provoked the entire internet with some pretty brash assertions, tweeting, Depression is not something you catch from the sky. Take responsibility for yourself and your life. Push forward and it's gone. That was the greatest thing about 2017 was this fucking dickhead was like maximum getting 187 likes, okay? That's when, that's when the world was... <laughs> In many ways, really bad, but there was one positive aspect of it, and that is that no one knew who the fuck Andrew Tate was. Fact. Not even a week before World Suicide Prevention Day, Andrew decided to label depression as a personal weakness instead of a medical condition that obviously exists according to virtually every physician on the planet. But hey, I'd rather listen to the guy who gets kicked in the head for a living. Now, this opened up a days-long firestorm of debates involving celebrities like Patton Oswalt, medical professionals like Dr. Vikas Shah, and even J.K. Rowling, who actually pulled her head out of her ass long enough to make a few decent points for once. Respond this thread will teach you a lot about the defense mechanism of projection, but zero about the real mental illness that is depression. Now, the thread in question is of course gone, seeing that Andrew has been kicked off the platform many times over, but according to this article from around that time, author Michael Tannenbaum highlights these posts and shows Andrew doubling down in his argument, spouting things like, everyone's depressed nowadays, tweeting me, I'm depressed and I- th in, a, in another sequence of Andrew Tate literally giving some of the worst motherfuckers a W. I can't believe it. This video should be just a, like, this video should literally be, Andrew Tate is so bad, he makes the worst people in society look good. Wild. Jake Paul? J.K. Rowling? Who's next, dude? Henry Kissinger? I feel like it's gonna be like, Henry Kissinger be like, yo, that's too far. You know, I, I, did, the, I did the massacres in Cambodia, but like, you're going too far with this. George W. Bush is about to fucking come swinging for Andrew Tate. I think, wow, it must suck to lose it life that hard. Boo hoo. Depression is overprescribed by 10,000%. Weakness is celebrated. Personal responsibility is absolved. That's the reality. The way depression is so violently defended is strange. So desperate to be unhappy and have an excuse to not change it. Very odd. Big Pharma supports the depression lie. You can't fix it yourself. Tate is crazy. It can only be cured with meds. Keep popping the pills. Since my post, I've had tons of previously and currently depressed people telling me I'm 100% oh, correct. This is his favorite. This is the Trump style defense, by the way. One of my favorites, at least personally, when it's like, oh, you think I'm wrong? Well, many people just told me I'm right. So guess what? Fucking own. It's literally a 14 year old arguing. Okay. It's how 14 year olds argue. Everything he does. I'm <laughs> the real secret to this. The real secret sauce to Andrew Tate's like success 
is that he behaves like a 14-year-old. Okay? When you think about it, when you think about it, everything he does is like a kid. Like, it's like stuff that I would have done when I was a child, okay? Like, yeah, for, uh, you think I don't have a girlfriend? You think I'm bitchless? That's what you're saying? Well, I have many girlfriends. One of them actually sent me this message, said that I'm actually incredibly sexy and very good in bed. Where is she? Well, she goes to a different school. Yeah, she's in Canada. Which is probably the reason why 14-year-olds love him. Because honestly, if you were fucking 14 and someone who behaves like a 14-year-old had access to like Bugattis and was like routinely around women he paid to be around, you'd be like, what the fuck? This 14-year-old's cool as shit. And I think that's where it's coming from. That's the reason why he's so popular. Because he like literally behaves... Well, maybe he's not even faking it. Maybe he's just, maybe it's the CTE, but he behaves like a fucking 14 year old. And yes, if he was going to your school when you were 14 and he had a fucking sick car, he'd be like, oh my God, this is literally the coolest 14 year old. He gets to have sleepovers with the boys, no yucky girls allowed, okay? Only when he wants to. He's constantly saying women are bitches and giving us cooties, okay? So every dude, every fucking like 10 to 14 year old is looking up to him like, this is so fire. This is so sick. Yeah, he also says homework and reading is stupid. A bombardment of anecdotal stories and frankly childlike arguments that hardly hold up in the face of actual evidence and numbers regarding depression. For instance, Mental Health America notes 50 million adults in the United States who experienced mental illness in 2019 alone, which is about 19% of all adults. And those are just the ones who reported it. A more recent 2022 study cites that over half these individuals have not sought treatment, totaling to at least 27 million people in the US suffering from mental illness without any prescriptions or professional assistance. I'm not saying that instances of overprescribing don't happen, they do, but Andrew is deliberately showing one side of a way more nuanced discussion as a means to be brash and justify the conclusions he's already made. It's crucial we work to normalize these issues as much as possible, not dismiss them and ostracize those who are struggling with depression. Pitting the root of depression on weakness simplifies the very real, legitimate factors that may be contributing to your ailment. Factors that are often out of your control. But don't listen to me, take it from Robin Williams' daughter, who responded to Andrew's tirade with whatever your intention, this happy people telling the depressed to get off their ass mentality is harmful, problematic, and wholly useless, she wrote. There are no experts in happiness, and he's clearly not an expert in depression. There is pain in suffering. There shouldn't be shame. To those internet bros out there who think that manning up means showing a complete lack lack of empathy, fear the day you need it. It'll come. People come at me and think they're smart. And they say, well, what about Robin Williams? He was famous. He killed himself. Blah, blah, blah. Bulldog mindset? I'm losing my fucking mind, dude. Why is every, like, alpha male Manosphere broadcast just exactly the same? Yo, what's up? Yeah, it's the alpha dog mindset coming to you right now. We're going to talk about how women are whores and divorce court is the worst thing to happen to America. It's communism. Oh, 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 oh. Let's, let's ride at dawn, bulldogs. Yeah, it's just, yeah, the manosphere is just full of fucking furries, dude, that just would be way more comfortable with themselves if they just allowed their freak flag to fly. You know what I mean? I say, yeah, and I'll tell you why he killed himself. He mm. killed himself because of people like you who are telling me, telling him depression is real, Dude, not people shit. like me. If he would have walked into his first therapy session. Yeah, no, he is Turkish, by the way. John Sönmez. You know this motherfucker's Turkish because his last name is Sönmez. That O has to have an umlaut on it. That's a U, uh, okay? And his therapist said, look, Robin, you're a millionaire. You're famous. You can fuck any woman alive. You're, yeah, get over it. Here is insulting to people with PTSD and genuine conditions. Grow up and get the fuck out of my office. 
I yeah. guarantee he'd still be alive. But these opinions make sense when we consider how much of Andrew's worldview is rooted in traditional values. Upholding patriarchal ideas and blaming society's downfall and its deviation from what was once considered moral and correct, it was reported that even back in 2018, Andrew ranted about the decline of Western civilization on Facebook after seeing- Yeah, no, he was- dude, he- he was- trying to make a name for himself as like a like a far right commentator back then that's what he was trying to latch on to some of which was probably real legitimate opinions that he had like real le legitimate reactionary uh points of view that he had and then others was uh, uh you know others was like him trying to fucking cloud farm off this he he hang he hung out with uh, the the edl guy what was his name tommy robinson like he was just straight up a grifter and it's inane and it's pointless. And when you're 52 and you're past it with no grandchildren in a house by yourself and all your friends have grandchildren in this beautiful life and you're sitting there by yourself, do you think the fact that you can afford a few extra Gucci bags is going to genuinely make you feel happy? These are hardly new principles. In fact, they've been widely preached for the past century. But because our world is slightly more progressive now than it was in the 1950s, Andrew is suddenly lauded by modern reactionaries as brave for exhibiting these thoughts freely, going against the grain and speaking his mind whenever and however he wants. And why shouldn't he? It's gotten him this far, hasn't it? Andrew Tate has built an empire off telling people what he thinks and why his ideas are objectively correct. Which would be one thing if those ideas didn't consist of women can't drive and should be treated as property. I think my sister is my her husband's property, yes. When a bride is walking down the aisle to marry the groom, the father walks next to her and gives her away. I'm not saying anything which is really truly even controversial. The whole world agreed that the woman belongs what? to the man when she decides to give herself to a man. I mean, if you knew anything about Andrew before clicking this video, it's that he isn't exactly the poster child of modern day feminism. A lot of these dudes <laughs> talk about fertility and, yeah. and looks and stuff. If I meet a girl who's 33 <laughs> and single, I know the amount of dick that's been through her before yeah. me is just simply unattractive. If I get a 19 year old girl, I might be her second or third man, right? But in general, this is also one of the reasons men find youth attractive. You want to blow up the internet, I'll blow up the internet right now. The reason 18 and 19 year olds- He's blowing up. He's like, I'll blow up the internet right now. I'll say so many suspicious things about young women. As a guy almost 40 years old, that it'll blow it up. It'll blow it up. Are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through let's kick. I'll say this right here on the <laughs> internet. Once you're 18, if you want to get yourself a real man, I know a guy. You do? I do, yeah. I do know a guy. Who is it? What? It, it's, a, it's a long story. I can't tell you exactly who because there's bad, there's bad things no, about the him. Yo, there's no f***ing way you just said that. Casually comparing women to the likes of animals or inanimate objects without even thinking about it, dehumanizing language is just embedded in his vocabulary. When pressed by Barstool's Dave Portnoy, Tate went on the defensive, stating that any woman who views herself as equal to a man is the exact kind of woman he would never give his time of day. But there are also plenty of women who are, view themselves as every bit the equal of a man. Those are the exact kind of women the exact kind of women I would never ever give my time of day to. And if a woman has an OnlyFans, that's fine, but she must owe her boyfriend her earnings because at the end of the day, that's his money. You say a lot of stuff about women like that they're your property. Okay. I said that if a woman is going out with a man, she belongs mm -hmm. to that man, that's his woman. So she wants to do OnlyFans, she owes him some money because she's his. What? What? What about the other way around? In a relationship. And if she wants to sell those, he has a stake in those parts of her body. So it's reverse, a uh, male porn star yeah, versus a woman. I don't know. Uh -huh. I think the women belong to the man. I think the woman yeah, is the that's open. inherently where you get. Oh! It's worth noting that Andrew doesn't. Know I love this idea because it's like pure egoism too. Where it's like, well, technically, I, I'm. Uh, there's no double standard if I admit that I'm double. I have a double standard. Yes, I believe women are property, and I believe men are not property, and therefore it doesn't matter. There is no hypocrisy in the reverse.
allow his girlfriends to go to the club without him. Stating in one clip, I inflict, I expect absolute loyalty from my woman, he says. I ain't having my chicks talking to other dudes, liking other dudes. My chicks don't go to the club without me. They are at home. Spoken by a true secure alpha. Keep in mind, Andrew has also gone on the record to say he doesn't believe female pilots should exist on account of their inability to park a car. And that women can barely be trusted to drive because every car accident that Andrew has experienced has involved a woman. I guess he forgot he was also involved in those accidents, but yeah, we'll let that slide for now. Andrew's riskier takes rely more on surface level shock value than actual facts and statistics, becoming especially clear after being demolished by Hassan Piker live on stream. I've seen some of your work uh, as you're doing the rounds on Twitch here, and uh, a lot of the things that you said are just generally untrue. There's no empirical evidence to back up those claims, which is why you resort to anecdotes quite frequently and say things like, oh, well, it's just common sense, right? But it's not technically common sense. My uh, personal opinion, uh, based on my personal biases of my life experience. There is a truth. And then there is your the own truth, personal I opinion backed by anecdotes from your own personal experiences. The fact that you're going on the internet, finding some study and saying that this is the truth, especially after the age of COVID and all the fucking truth we were told with that garbage, you want to sit here and say, oh, the internet said X. I'm sure the internet did. I'm talking about my personal experiences and some people agree with me and some people do not. That is perfectly fine. Don't give a fuck if people agree with me or otherwise. People are listening to me and they're either agreeing with me or not. I know, but you're still wrong and that's the problem. Uh, I disagree with you. Do you want to be right or do you want to keep speaking into a hug box where people agree with you? I'm simply asking you to look at the data. So let's change the subject because you've just proven your point. Okay. Andrew, do you believe, well, I didn't, I didn't, uh, you didn't really prove anything, but it's cool. Uh, do you believe the earth is flat? Oh, he took his headphones off? He gets very stressed sometimes and, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's important. Brother, brother, and I, I, I It looks flat, it feels flat, but you believe it's round. Why do you uh, believe the earth is round? Because I have personal experience that would prove to me that the earth is round. Oh, you have personal experience. What, what happened? Did you go up to the moon? Is well, that how you figured correct. it out? Exactly. I flew up into space and I looked down on Earth and yeah. I saw a big circle. That's crazy. Okay. We, you don't have to, hey, listen, you don't have to concede on that point, but I think you and I both understand the importance of empirical evidence in that one, right? You've ruined the stream. Everyone wants you out of it. So either change tune and get with the program and be fun or keep sitting here and talking sarcastic and really slowly and repeating yourself and talking about how you only believe what you see on the internet because no one really gives a fuck. And it's boring. It's right, boring. So, well, let's move on. It's, it's clear boring. from this exchange alone that Andrew reaches a conclusion first and works backwards from there, justifying his flawed positions any way he can, even if all the evidence he has is purely anecdotal. It's why he believes women to be stupider than men, despite scientific evidence proving otherwise. I personally don't understand how anyone can listen to someone so stubborn and unwilling to change their mind on anything, but that's besides the point. Andrew's inherently I can, misogynistic. And the reason why is because because people just want someone that they agree with, especially if you are launching uh, your platform firmly on top of pre-existing social conditioning, pre-existing social values that we have been conditioned into believing. That's it. That's why nobody gave a shit about Andrew Tate when he was like talking about boxing or even depression for that matter. But all of a sudden... When he got on the misogyny train, boom, that fucking spaceship took off harder than Artemis did so that the astronauts could figure out that the Earth is round and not flat because that's the only way to do that, obviously. That's how it works. Like, It is infinitely easier to build a right-wing media career than it is to go against the reactionary worldview that a lot of people are socially conditioned into believing. You have to fucking turn around and like explain to people why they're wrong. Nobody wants to hear that they're wrong. Nobody wants someone to undermine their worldview. ideals lie at the center of his character, a cornerstone of his success. They've remained consistent for as long as he's been online. The only difference is now he's able to push them to a much wider, more susceptible audience, garnering more than eight and a half million views on a video where he says this. And I'm also saying that if a man did decide to explore his options, it would not be as disgusting as if a female decided to explore okay, options. Okay, wouldn't that just be disgusting then? No. It's different if a woman does it. It's different if a woman does it. Everyone watching this knows it's different if a woman cheats. Dude, yeah, he's like a kid. He's like a kid. He's like, come on, you know. You agree with me. You must. 
And there are plenty of people who are like, yeah, no, I do agree with him. He's spitting. He's spitting. He's like a child. He's a literal child. He's a 14-year-old brain, dude. It's fucking awesome. It's different. What kind of relationship do you have with your mother? To me, this is the video that pushed Andrew from being a niche micro-influencer to the social media juggernaut he is today. Making appearances on huge podcasts all in the last two months of me recording this. Invited into the Twitch zeitgeist by the sixth largest streamer on the platform and a MILF token beneficiary, Aiden Ross. Anthony donated $3. The Taliban says hello. What's good, buddy? The bottom line here is that Andrew <laughs> Tate has wet- What the fuck? Yo! I love that. Weaponize his new position in the mainstream in order to peddle a business of misogyny. It's one of the varied reasons he's been able to maintain such wealth. His educational courses generate millions of dollars per month. Take the PhD program, for example. For the low, low price of 778 pounds, you too can master the ways of a true professional and obtain your honorary PhD, your pimpin' hose degree, as he calls it. In fact, why don't we look at the original course description to get a better understanding. My name is Andrew Tate. I'm the most competent person on the entire planet to teach you about male-female interactions. How did I become rich? Webcam. I've been running a webcam studio for nearly a decade. I've had over 75 girls work for me, and my business model is different than 99% of webcam studio owners. Over 50% of my employees were actually my girlfriend at the time, and out <laughs> of all my girlfriends, none were in the entertainment industry no! before they no! met me. <laughs> I don't know if that's a flex. First no! thing, keeping four girlfriends ah! all happy is hard work and leaves you with very little time so you learn how to bro he's literally like <laughs> what is it for 700 uh, pound for 700 euro i will teach you how to groom women i will teach you how to sex traffic women course number 102 how to do sex trafficking you steal their passports it's key to figure out what their passports where their passports are so you can put them in a safe so they can't reach the passports how to streamline getting new good girlfriends. All women are not created equal. This is how I came up with what is now the PhD system. I learned the most time efficient way to meet girls, get them through the dating process, get them to bed, test if they're a good girl or not, and begin the process of them falling deeper and deeper into love. That is my skill to extremely efficiently get women to fall in love with me. That's it. And no one else on the internet is teaching this. No one. Which is a lot to lay out there. In fact, I I guess it's no wonder he's since removed the subscription after it caused an uproar online. This webcam business of his has remained an area of question since it was profiled by the UK's Sunday Mirror, in which they describe the Tate Brothers' business as a total scam. Oh wait, except that's not the Mirror saying that. It's Andrew and Tristan themselves telling you they're running a scam. My first two girls who worked for me worked for me because they loved me. Mm. I love this man. Right. I am with this man. We're a team. He's going to take me from the ghetto streets to the hotel suites. <laughs> right? So we're, working, so we're working together. According to the Tate Bible, Andrew's own book that I read so you don't have to. By the way, GHCSD is correct. That is straight up how women get trafficked, by the way. Like a lot of people think like, oh yeah, you know, a fucking white van rolls up and like black bags a woman and then tosses her in the van and it's like taken. That's not how it works. In a lot of instances, you have someone like this who's able to just, like, uh, hook someone in, okay? Which is precisely the reason why he had to delete that because plenty of people were like, what the fuck? That's like, that's, you're describing sex trafficking people, okay? You're welcome. Thank me later. Tate introduces his business by writing, Beautiful women work for me and make me millions of dollars. They obey me because they love me. They clean my house and make me coffee and get naked on demand. That's how I make over 300k a month. I own a webcam studio. It's no secret. I've never tried to hide it. The girls sit on a computer and make huge sums of cash. No man touches them except me. Everyone's happy, especially me. The webcaming business doesn't seem to exist now in the 
capacity that it once did, but it was originally how the two made their fortune following Andrew's departure from fighting, and the reason why 22 girls now have Andrew's name tattooed on their bodies, but maybe that's another story. According to what they told The Mirror, their studio employed over 72 scantily clad models, taking calls from fans paying $4 a minute. They can also set up private shows and pay tips at their own risk, whatever that means. While some men plummet into debt, others put up tens of thousands of their inheritance for these women, at least according to Tristan, who feels no remorse because no one cares, and it's their problem, not mine. These models were paid to scam men online, lying about their grave living conditions, pretending to have medical emergencies, dying family members, eviction notices. Andrew and Tristan's webcam empire encapsulates the specific business model the Tates have always employed, defrauding a particularly naive and desperate crowd in order to stack their millions higher. Good thing their scamming days are over and they'd never do that again, huh? No. Nope. how did we get to this point and how did the webcam business even come about to begin with? So I text all my girlfriends, I think it was five of them, text all five, said you're all coming here to live with me and work with me. None of them knew about each other. So I put them all around the same table and I was like, look, we're gonna start a webcam business. You're gonna stay, you're gonna live in London. I'm gonna look after you and we're gonna get rich, rich. We're gonna be a team. And they're all like, well, who's this? I'm like, she's my girlfriend, she's my girlfriend, she's my girl, you're all my chicks. Oh. Andrew and his brother get women. In fact, they're so secure in their sexualities, they spend pages upon pages of their book telling us about it. We were always good with women. Do you know how many girlfriends I've had? I've always been good with women. Women don't chase me for money, I've always been good. At what point are you just trying to convince yourself? I mean, just a paragraph later, he's telling us how good- Rule, this is another Hasanabi broadcast rule. If you have it, Okay, you don't say you have it. If you're constantly saying you have it, you are you are not capable of having it. Okay, no matter what it is, whether it's nukes or not, nuclear uh, proliferation is of course a Hasanabi doctrine for nation building. That's entirely separate. But if you, for example, claim you are an alpha male and you regularly say it, even though the subject matter, the alpha male concept, is already fucking fraught uh, and and fraudulent. Uh, you are not what represents an alpha male. No one is running around being like, I'm an alpha male. I'm an alpha male. Good he was at selling home improvement. <laughs> he said, I have erectile dysfunction. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, you can literally make an argument about the nuke thing by talking about Israel. Israel has it. What is it? Nuclear programs and nukes in general. Does Israel say it has nukes? No, it does not. There you go. Like, man, I don't care. How does this tell me how to get women and become a top G? Finally admitting that the problem with women is how expensive they are. In their own words, the two realized they needed a better system. And after seeing the potential in webcamming, the brothers realized how to put the apparent harem of women around them to work. Rather than me going out slaving all day, I had a few chicks of my own. I put one on a webcam in my apartment. Then we had four girls on cam in two bedrooms, one after the other. I slept in the hall. I was that money hungry wrote Tristan. From there, the brothers were able to upgrade to a five-bedroom penthouse in Hertfordshire, raking in huge profits before leaving the UK for Romania, around the time they made their first million dollars. But why the sudden move to Eastern Europe, mm. you may ask? Well, I'll let mm. Andrew I wonder why he did that. Andrew explain. People say, why did in Romania? And I explain my five reasons. One of them is the Me Too era. If you don't know the police and say he me back in 1988, they're going we should have done something about it then. They go, oh, well, you're a I say, no, I'm not a but I like the idea of being able to just say, to, to do what I want. I like being free. Yeah, I, I did not edit that. A main reason Andrew moved to Romania, where he currently resides, is because of a lower chance of being caught for sex crimes. And they still got raided. Romania is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's wild. But yeah, no, I mean, my man, again goes to Romania to avoid, uh, you know, being, <laughs> being in trouble with the law for sex crimes and then still making the Roman, another dub, Andrew Tate with another dub, Romanian police. You hate to say it, but once again, Andrew Tate so bad, Romanian police look good in, in, uh, retaliation to Andrew Tate. Common theme here. Okay. Feminists. 
There's no open homosexuality. It's corrupt, which suits me. There's, there's no open homosexuality. <laughs> ah! Excuse me, you were speeding. Yeah, yeah, sorry, mate. What's the, f I have to pay a fine? Yes, you must pay a fine. Oh, okay, yeah, right, bye. <laughs> Speed off, he doesn't care, I don't care. Back done. It's corrupt, which I fucking love. No immigrants and refugees. Back in 2018, it was reported that Andrew was involved in an altercation that took place at a nightclub. According to him, a man knocked his phone out of his hand at the club, and when he tried to fight back, he punched a woman by accident, breaking her jaw. And at being investigated by British police for abusing another woman, Andrew had his home raided the first time and devices confiscated before being detained for two days in the UK, at least as outlined in The Guardian. Around the time UK police were investigating abuse allegations, Tate is understood to have left the UK for Romania. So could their sudden move to a West European country with notoriously relaxed sexual assault laws coming off the heels of an investigation by British authorities all be nothing more than a big coincidence? Of course. And I would never allege anything otherwise. You never hit a girl, right? Can't yeah. do that. But if we if, learned that the hard way last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, you can't know. But if all the other girls see me be disrespected, yeah. they're going to lose respect for me. Facts. Right? Yep. So when she's like, I ain't cleaning that up, you get that. So I was like, look, you're, I don't care. Got her shit out the window. So out the window. <laughs> Got her by her two arms and marched her out the door, locked the door. End of it. She went to the police. Oh, shit. And told the police I hit her when I didn't. Four months later, I'm laying in bed. And I heard the door. Boom, 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 boom. Just pause for a second. I heard police. But I didn't know what it was for, right? But I, I, there's a few things I can't say in the podcast. I've done, I've lived a varied life, right? I've done mm -hmm. some things when I had to pay the bills. Right. So I was a bit like, ah, oh, what's this going to be? So I like flush my phone down. Okay. I just got to point something out here. For a, I mean, this motherfucker routinely admits the crimes, like when he's flexing. So I find it additionally wild that there are still apparently some crimes he will not admit on camera, which is weird. Okay, let's continue. Down the toilet quickly, boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming! And they're like, you're under arrest for a suspicion of assault of this dumb hoe. <laughs> And I'm like, wait, this is the whole? According to them, the whole reason they started the webcam business was because of the plethora of women constantly around the house. They figured if the girls were there, they may as well monetize them. Literally how they describe it in their book. In fact, when Tristan... Also, I don't even know how you flush a phone down the toilet. I guess we're just going to overlook that. Because, you know, in a sequence of made up shit that Andrew Tate routinely fucking... Uh, you know, puts out there. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that this is also made up. Tristan's girlfriend at the time refused to cam. He dumped her on the spot. He was dead set on using women to make money, and he didn't care what relationships got in the way of the bag. I mean, just the way they discuss actual human beings with each other is insane. If any girl got quote-unquote fresh with Tristan or Andrew, they were gone. They had adopted a new modernized way of pimping women online for profits, and they've since encouraged their audience to do the same, advising, if your girl won't wave her tip at a computer, if that girl won't do it for you to help change both of your lives, get rid of her straight away because she ain't ever gonna help you do shit. Going on to brag about sleeping with every woman they've hired. All but one. Dude was, is laundering money for the Romanian Mafia? Yes. I think that's the very real side of Andrew Tate that, I mean, he talks about a little bit, but is not hyper-focused on by most of the uh, YouTube commentary space and everyone else that has covered Andrew Tate. The real reason why Andrew Tate is still around to a certain degree is because uh, I, I believe he, he does help uh, the Romanian mafia, at least one of the Romanian mafias, uh, launder money. We know that because he, you know, owns a bunch of casinos that they own. Uh, these are businesses that are not flush. They are not actually, you know, turning profit. Some of them are literally closed, and yet they are still in operation. And... Uh, and as I've said already, I would, if I was the fucking Romanian mafia, I wouldn't be super stoked that like my, my, uh, you know, main money laundering guy is constantly running his fucking mouth, uh, all over social media about how big of a badass he is, uh, drawing international ire to his businesses. One from Lithuania, who only sucked Andrew's dick, writing, she escaped, I guess. What the f- 
fuck does that mean? There's no secret to how we made our money, gentlemen. We were internet pimps. And that's exactly what they encourage you to do as well. Just so long as you buy their PhD course and gain direct access to the legendary Tristan Tate. Only, if it's anything like their other courses, you may want to save your money. Cobra is not someone I would take advice from, and definitely not someone I would buy a course from if I was looking to learn about marketing, e-commerce, Amazon FBA, or any online business. Andrew likes to think of himself as Morpheus, breaking you out of the matrix by forcing a red pill down your throat and screaming in your face that you will get rich just as long as you listen to his advice. I mean, he is the only human being possibly capable of teaching you the key to money making and business strategies because after all, he has supercars, mansions, a lavish life that you wish you had. As long as you're below Andrew's financial status, you are poor, and you need to change that in order to be fulfilled. I, Tate, Lord of Earth, set the bar. I set the difference between rich and poor. My amount of money is the amount of money you need to be rich. If you have less money than me, even by a single cent, you're a fucking brokey, a wagey, a peon, a peasant, a nobody. You are poor. But that all comes after you give him a quick $50 a month. Because what's the point of Andrew even sharing his abundant knowledge with the brokies if he can't make a quick buck in the process? Precisely at 5 million bucks a month, in fact. With how much he's been plugging this course on streams and interviews, it's no wonder Andrew's been able to crack over 100,000 members with his goal set on over a million students in the near future. This is what really pissed me off. I mean, I still, to this day, and I've been pretty fucking correct on a lot of my um, Andrew Tate takes. I still to this day do not believe that that Discord server was actually 100,000 active paid members. Okay? I don't. I don't believe that. But I do believe that he made a fuckload of money off of it. Like, too much. For sure. Um... It makes no sense that 100,000 people had 50 fucking dollars to pay him every month. No shot. No shot. And it's not that I'm underestimating incels. It's that I'm telling you $50 is too much of a price point. It's too high a price point for someone to, to you know... Think about it this way, okay? Think about it this way. I've been a live commentator. I've been a live commentator. Not even me. Fuck me. XQC. Live for 8 to 10 hours every single day to 70,000 uh, live viewers, okay? Sometimes 100,000, sometimes lower than that. But regardless, XQC has what? Fucking 80,000 subs or some shit? He's been doing this for years. And a lot of those subs come from Twitch Prime, which is free. And some of them come from direct $5 uh, payments. Think about any other subscription service. Would you pay Netflix if it was $50 a month? Would you pay for Hulu if it was $50 a month? There's just no fucking way. $50 is so much money. It's so much money. Also gifted, so not everyone's paying on Twitch. Yeah, exactly. The $50 a month thing is just like, it's so, so, so expensive that for the information that you're getting out of it, no matter what the fucking... Uh, no matter what the promises are, people are not willing to pay 50 bucks. You know? No shot. <clears throat> anyway. Um... I just don't think that the active users were all active users. No matter how many fucking places he went to, no matter how much he like placed himself front and center, not every single interaction with Andrew Tate was a direct fucking, was a direct conversion <clears throat> to his uh, kind of like hidden Discord server, you know what I mean? In comparison to everything else. 
no matter how much of a multi-level marketing scheme his fucking Discord server ultimately was, the price point alone was so fucking high that it's it's virtually impossible for it to have been as successful. So I don't believe that. Okay? I just don't believe that. I'm sure he made a lot of money off of it. I just don't think that it was... Uh, I mean, we have no proof that all of the 100,000... Uh, all of the 100,000 Discord members were actually paying into it. Or rather, he also openly stated that they wouldn't, they wouldn't kick off... Uh, they wouldn't kick off people who were no longer paying, but they would drag them into what is known as prison. Uh, so for that reason alone, you know that it's not the actual real number. But I would love to see the active users on that. Okay, I would love to see the active users on that. Future. You will never achieve anything without me. That's why you need Hustlers University in the war room. You need us, I don't need you. If you don't join, do I stop being rich? No, I don't care if you join or not. You need me. That's what Hustlers University is about because I'm the only person out here who teaches people how to get rich. I do that on purpose because I want rich people around me because when the battle comes, when the Satan returns to earth and I need to make the battle call to the war room soldiers, I ain't got time for no brokies. But despite what may seem like glaring similarities to con men like Ty Lopez and Grant Cardone, Andrew Tate claims to be different. But how so? Well, let's take a look at the courses themselves. CobraTate.com offers more than a few options to change your life by selling every type of educational course under the sun. From a $200 fitness program, a $300 body language course, to the $800 PhD. It's a double-edged sword. Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, Tony Robbins. So many examples of this. Okay, Deepak Chopra. There are examples of this that is like fucking legitimate, like legit con men that have been able to create a carve out of space for themselves in popular culture. There are examples of this in on the internet as well. Okay. The reason why Andrew Tate was much larger than Ty Lopez, for example, is because of the same double-edged sword of misogyny. It's also the very same reason why his success was uh, short-lived. Because Ty Lopez was at least... He wasn't smart enough to, I guess, launch uh, use misogyny as a launching pad, okay? But at the same time, that gave him staying power because it didn't draw the ire of all the platforms that turned around and were like, okay, we got to ban this guy. We got to fucking deal with this. This is getting completely out of control we just talked about, and a full manga about Andrew Tate's life? Tales of Wudon. In a previous life, I lived 5,000 human years atop Wudon Mountain. I remember every lived second. Life is competition. Competition is violence. I mean, I can't be the only one who noticed that Andrew Tate in this perfect world gave himself the hair. Regardless, one of the two biggest courses to Andrew Tate's name is The War Room, a $4,000 global network in which exemplars of individuals individualism work to free the modern man from socially induced incarceration by, I don't know, shooting barrels and boxing each other? The war room is everything outside of money. The war room will provide you with everything about the masculine imperative, the masculine life outside of money, and those things are actually far more important. Andrew is intentionally vague with what the war room actually consists of. From the limited info we have, you gain access to a network of millionaires connected over Telegram who must prove their place in the group even after paying the pricey entrance fee. What that means exactly, I couldn't tell you. It's so secretive, the only three members we know of are Andrew, Tristan, and some guy named Iggy, whose main job title is Magician! Master of Spells Let's go! and Shadows. Let's fucking this is what go! I'm gonna start calling myself from now on. If He's a wizard! to meet and work with the self-proclaimed greatest hypnotist to ever live, it doesn't make you want to take out a loan right now. I don't know what does. But we haven't even touched on Andrew's flagship program, the course he pedals on every interview and stream he appears on, the one you've probably already heard of in some capacity, Hustlers University. Your worldview is about to change forever. If you have a seatbelt on your chair, put it on. If you don't, hold on tight. We're about to get rich. <laughs>
right here, Hustlers University. First thing to know is there are now three versions of HU. The first iteration, simply titled Hustlers University, Hustlers University 2.0, the new and improved program he's been selling for $50 a month, with the Hustlers University 3.0 being added most recently. In fact, it's so recent, I barely have any information to work with. So I'd like to go ahead and start with the first version. As it may not be up for sale on Andrew's website today, copies of it still linger online, and from what I can tell, originally included Andrew sitting down with his students and explaining how business works through the means of references to the Third Reich. I tell this to everybody all the time, and nobody understands what I'm trying to say. I'm going to try and articulate it. Speed is extremely important in business. Everything must happen instantly, quickly, fast, speed, attack. Hitler conquered Europe with Blitzkrieg. You need to go quickly. Yeah, only slightly jarring. According to Andrew, a business is like an airplane. It can't go down even when all engines fail, except eventually that is what happens, right? If an airplane is flying through the sky, even if its engines fail, it will continue. I will never beat the fucking Hassan eats on stream accusations, okay? It's over. Every fucking clip I'm eating, dude. Every time there's like a clip. Oh, God damn it. It's just, I, it's over. I, I will literally, I am permanently scarred, okay? Why am I eating at the best types of, best moments of content? Fuck. Continue to fly. It will not fall out of the sky and instantly crash to the ground. It will continue to fly. Do you know why? Because it has forward momentum. And a business is exactly the same. The key with business is to what? make sure you're always moving forward. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't always keep going forward, brother. It inevitably crashes. Does this guy literally think engine failure doesn't ultimately lead to a plane crash? It's a great analogy that he just described because yes, Inevitably, that plane has to land one way or the other. Only a few minutes later, Andrew advises we lie about our business. <laughs> you even put the fucking Austin show clip. I wonder what this does. Start making money, but doesn't offer a ton of solutions for what to do once we can't fulfill any orders. You can start businesses very, very cheaply if you do it the right way. Make a website, put some pictures on there, pretend you've got a whole bunch of stuff you ain't got, and start getting money in. You can start this business for five grand. You're gonna start getting money in, and you're not gonna have any way to fulfill the orders. But back to business lesson number one, because you're a fast worker, because you're industrious, because you work with speed, you'll find a way to fulfill the orders. Hey, listen, worst case, you give them the money back. Worst case, you refund them. He then suggests that out of 40 startups costing $5,000 each, it's one so, of them has I love to this. work. Though if you did have those kinds of funds, I have no idea why you'd be sat here listening to this guy. With five grand startups, you can now for the same price as starting one company, you can now start 40 companies. One of them's gonna work, because they're five grand each to start. One of them's gonna work. So you have to learn that the idea of starting a business is not expensive. Get that out of your head. I'm a millionaire. Not to mention any sort of helpful advice he may offer is just information you can find readily available online for free. Nothing that hasn't been done already and certainly nothing profound enough to justify the cost. There's no reason to sift through hours of Andrew scribbling on a whiteboard when you can just look up proper business strategies on Google. I mean, it doesn't have to be this dramatic. Forget studying. You can either go to university and look at books and study and be a geek or you can learn how to make some money because they don't teach you that in university. They don't teach you how to make money. Have you ever seen a college professor with an S63 and a McLaren and a Lambo and an Aston Martin standing next to a Porsche? No, you've never seen any of this. I know how to make Cash. Hustlers University 2.0 is a watered down, soulless version of the original Hustlers University, if such a thing were even possible. The biggest difference being the format. Instead of paying to listen to the man himself, you're thrown into a Discord server and assigned a random quote unquote professor who is not Andrew Tate. You never even get to see the top G from my understanding. Probably because he's too busy marketing the damn thing in between police questioning for sex trafficking. Sorry, I, I keep getting ahead of myself. Let's just get through the rest of this course so we can talk about the criminal allegations. Upon joining- Straight up the worst professors have the nicest cars, by the way. And by the worst, I mean like the closest to Andrew Tate type motherfuckers. Joining the Hustlers University 2.0 server, you're introduced to a time cash quadrant in which you decide if you're time like rich- All the fucking Ivy League- The actual Hustlers University ass motherfuckers, okay? The ones that are- Rich 
but cash poor, time poor and cash poor, time poor and cash rich, or time rich and cash rich. If you've lost track, that's okay, and none of this actually matters because you don't need this course. It's a waste of money. Whatever you choose, though, determines the group of courses you access, containing the most basic surface level information Still jealous of Tate, tax the lawmakers. How can you have such an awesome fucking uh, username and then have such a twisted worldview? What the fuck am I jealous of Andrew Tate for? That like, uh, <laughs> I'm so jealous that he's universally silenced by every social media platform that he had to go to fucking fake ass rumble, dude. Yeah, the duality of tax the lawmakers. He's libertarian, that's how, oh yeah, I guess man, that makes sense regarding anything yeah, i love being canceled so i'm just like kind of i'm reeling with the anger that i haven't been canceled as hard as he has been from copywriting to drop shipping to freelancing the instructors are there to make money and have been criticized for possessing no deeper understanding of what they're teaching so in these chat rooms where your instructors have a fraction of the charisma of why does why do all of his fucking teachers look like coffeezilla with different hairstyles and and different weight class teaching so in the it's like Coffeezilla on t uh, Coffeezilla after Clembuterol, cycling Clembuterol. These chat rooms where your instructors have a fraction Coffeezilla after he shaves his head and grows a beard of the charisma of Tate. You're supposed to Okay, this guy doesn't look like Coffeezilla. <laughs> commit yourself to these skill sets which are super surface level. There was some screen recordings for the website building and Facebook ad portions, but for most of it, it was just this absolutely basic PowerPoint presentation with a voiceover behind it. And the voiceover sounded like it was done through a laptop microphone. And we never even really got to see the person behind the voice. I'm not even trolling or joking. I feel like if I hired somebody on Fiverr to make me a dropshipping course, this is exactly what I would get. What you end up doing in this course is sort of learning how to run an Amazon side hustle for Jeff Bezos. Like, no offense, you're not breaking the matrix. One of the ways students of Hustlers University have been able to make their money is through their affiliate program. <laughs> I literally called this. I literally called this. <laughs> Without even seeing Hustlers University courses, like I didn't even see a fucking single Hustlers University course. And I was like, I've seen scams like this so many times on the internet. One, it's a multi-level marketing scheme, and it definitely just teaches you cryptocurrency shit, uh, day trading, and also drop shipping. It's the same shit. It's just they all do the same shit. Which has apparently been closed for a little while, according to them. Originally, it was to promote Tate and the course through the means of viral clips uploaded to TikTok and YouTube. So if you were wondering why Andrew was literally all over your For You page, it's because of these affiliates with an affiliate link in their bio. So we get left with an entire empire of Tate's stan accounts peddling spliced up shorts of our top G alpha king to the masses, generating millions of impressions based off how extreme he is. And you wonder why he's so successful. Successful. Well, two point to be fair, it is sexist that, you know, so many multi-level marketing schemes ex almost like entirely target women. We need MLMs for dudes, like only dudes. You know what I mean? So it's good. It's good that like males have a, a little MLM for themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Know might be different the in the way that it's taught, the core purpose remains the same. Andrew is making money off vague promises. He's not necessarily selling how to get rich, he's selling the idea of becoming rich. If he can just get you in the door and nothing else matters, he has your money and with over 150,000 members and counting, Andrew is able to turn a seven figure profit each month purely off subscriptions. He's already had an MLM, it's called crypto. I mean, that's, that's exactly what he's doing, so yes. That is what he's doing. Yes, for the dudes, a crypt, uh, a multi-level marketing scheme for the bros. Cryptocurrency is of course going to be involved. Andrew Tate does teach you cryptocurrency alone. And yeah, you also may how to groom and sex traffic a girl that is unfortunate enough to be in your vicinity make a couple bucks here and there, but it's ultimately benefiting him and his brother more than anyone else. To think you need to pay over $4,000 a year just to make money on the side is ridiculous. Money can be made anywhere without having to listen to these cartoony villains. Bowing down to these two geniuses in hopes that they'll make you a little money all because they speak to your inner insecurities and validate your misogynistic tendencies is truly one of the most embarrassing and beta things I've ever seen. If you think for a second that the guys who oh. openly admit 
committed to running a total scam of a webcam service, tricking desperate guys into pouring their life savings into their business, wouldn't do the exact same thing to their loyal, loving fans. I've got some news for you. Tell me how why you joined. Your other friend said he joined. It changed his I life. I'll tell you why I joined too. Have you made more than you invested? Yeah, duh. So is it a good investment? Duh, I made money. I made loads. Yeah, yeah, question. Honest, how are you making money? By how selling the money? book or what? I don't want to. How are you making the money? money? Don't worry don't about how we're making our money. Yeah, Join the pro You got to sign up to see. That's right. Bro, That's this right. is this is such a scam, brother. I joined. I was like, dad broke. I joined that guy even broker. So I don't know what the fuck. Like, what the fuck. <laughs> I joined the guy broker. One of the main reasons Andrew has racked up so many new subscriptions to HU over the past month is thanks to the help of streamers and podcasters allowing him to talk up a big game on their shows. He conveys just the right amount of information without revealing too much in order to sell it, with him and his clones using cryptic language to sound more alluring. It's not necessarily- I wanna hear it, I wanna hear What did you do? You made it bread how? Oh, found out! We're gonna give away three. I can't just say that. That's towards him. I can't just give out his sauce. So, did you did you did you get a job, or are you selling the book? What no, are you doing? I didn't, have, I didn't have to get a job. So no job. Okay, so how did you not do selling the book? So did you make money up here? Like, what are you doing? You're saying what? You're saying what? Just sign up. That's all. You just, just gotta sign up, sign up bro. bro. Sign up, it's 50 bucks, don't be tight. To desperate teens in search of a way out of the matrix, this course sounds like the key to freedom. And even if you've got doubts, as he says himself, you'll never truly know until you try it. He makes money no matter how you cut it. A grift that keeps on grifting. And Aiden honestly isn't wrong when he implies he should be getting a cut, considering Hustlers University tends to garner 6,000 new members per appearance Andrew makes on his streams. You're not gonna reduce our subscriber number. Every single time that, I do one of these Twitches, we get three, four, five, six. I I actually don't believe that. I think you debated that scum all right. I wish you spoke more, impressed him on being a rapist and being proud of it. Dude, I, I, that was gonna come. My joke, my, my ultimate goal was to one, first hit him where it hurts with the fucking uh, entry point because he was like, I was trying to fucking plug the holes in the dam, brother. I saw what he was doing. I saw that he went on these like massively viral Twitch streams. I knew that he was doing it specifically to fucking pump his multi-level marketing scheme. So I was trying to hit it immediately. Like I was trying to plug the fucking holes of the dam. But then I plugged it too hard. And then he imploded. Everybody started ripping him. And then it was done. You know what I mean? Like it, it was it was fucking dumb. He got crit. It was done. He got crit damaged. And it was over. Unfortunately, I it's I served him a little too hard, and then now I can't even fucking debate him on the on the rape stuff. Cause like that was my goal. My goal was to have him come back, and then we would have another conversation. And in which case, I was going to exclusively talk about like the accusations, Romanian police, the concept of grooming, uh, and like how he groomed women into working. Uh, for him and how he openly stated it why did he delete the the accusations or rather <laughs> admissions why did he delete his admission of like grooming women you know and unfortunately he he caught he caught a couple bodies there and then you know debating rape i mean no no it's not about debating rape obviously you can't that's like ridiculous I'm, I'm, but you can expose someone for their rapist tendencies. You know what I mean? Bell on Tate, yeah. Six thousand new students. Everything's going fantastic for us. Yeah, We're because just so far, yeah. Just, no, you, you admit it. You admit it. This is a good way to market your your Please, product. I'm marking. People don't push back product. because Aiden is like. Like I said, he's dick eating a little oh, bit. Oh, so oh, bro, hey, 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 you're not gonna talk to my homie like that. Watch your mouth, you're hey, not dick I mean, riding. Appreciate you, gang. Appreciate right. you. It's worth noting that Andrew has since been banned from Twitch, so the way he sells this course in the future is gonna have to be a little different. But for the past little while, he's been advertising off the backs of anyone who so much as acknowledges him. So of course, the irony that I may be sending more subscriptions his way by making this video isn't lost on me. But it's an inevitability I've accepted, seeing as he'll continue to grift regardless of anything I have to say. It makes no difference, because we'll always have the Aiden Rosses of the world there to slob him him off at any given chance. But nice chatting to you. Stop! Man. Don't go, bro. Andrew, please don't go. That was terrible.
which is especially uncomfortable to watch when you consider the open criminal investigation. On April 11th of 2022, Andrew made headlines once again when his Romanian home was raided by police in relation to a human trafficking investigation. With this particular Daily Beast article igniting the flame, journalist Will Summers wrote that the raid- Why is Aiden doing this? Because why is Aiden a person with 60K live viewers every night? Why? Because no matter how like dumb he portrays himself, and he might genuinely be dumb when it comes to like certain points of, uh, you know, certain points of like history, like knowing who was the leader of certain countries during World War II or, or whatever. He knows content. He knows exactly how to fucking farm views. That's why he went live in the middle of like Andrew. Uh, uh, that's, that's why when uh, Andrew Tate was banned, off of TikTok, he immediately went live and was like, oh, come on the broadcast. Okay? There's great content, Bram had been prompted by reports of an American woman being abducted and held against her will in a foreign country, a probe that escalated to include human trafficking and rape, according to Romania's Directorate for Investigating Organized Crime and Terrorism. Footage of the Tate compound being swarmed by officers in riot gear was released online, where Andrew and his brother Tristan can be seen nervously pacing around the property before being escorted into the back of a police. But he didn't act like you? He just agrees and sucks him off, though. Yeah, no shit, because he understands that Andrew Tate's gonna go on his fucking broadcast and give him, like, 80k to 100k views. Andrew Tate's not gonna come on my fucking broadcast because he knows I'm gonna fucking clap him. police van and driven away from their villa, not without confiscating computers, phones, and iPads. According to multiple Romanian news outlets, there appear to have been two women found at the property, a Romanian girl and the 21-year-old American who the police had originally set out to find. Tristan and Andrew, though, have claimed the exact opposite, that there were no women on the property and the whole investigation was based on a false report. No girls were found in my house and nobody was arrested. According to a Romanian newspaper, the 21 one year old American alleged she was approached by Tristan on Facebook, who, after a short period, was able to convince her that he was in love with her before she came out to Romania, leaving her boyfriend behind. A testimony. By the way, this is why, like, a lot of those other girls on TikTok posting their fucking DMs from Andrew Tate is, like, kind of funny, but also really, really nefarious and really scary at the same time, too. Because, like, those girls low key survived a possible sex trafficking attempt you you get what i'm saying like he literally would the more clout he had the more uh the better a, an opportunity he has to like dupe fucking young girls all around the world to come to romania and and you know groom them into doing sex work like that's the other that's the other side of that uh of all those girls like basically celebrating that they never responded to Andrew Tate's DMs like yeah we all joke about it but like there's plenty of girls who did funny that doesn't exactly go against the type of tactics Andrew bragged about in the PhD course but does fly in the face of the Tate's own series of events so her boyfriend is obviously one of these believe all females oh my god my girlfriend's not a boo kind of guys she was a cold she was she was one second she wasn't even hot her boyfriend who was obviously a fan of emergency meeting live saw her Instagram stories said, oh my God, you're at the Tate brothers house in Romania. This was some American chick. And she went, uh, uh, no, I, I didn't want to come to this party. They, they made me come here and I'm not allowed to leave. She said that to her boyfriend as some bullshit excuse. And the next day, the police come to our house, fully loaded. The American embassy send the cops to our house. Now they take us to the police station. So all the pictures of me and Andrew being taken away by the police, those are real photos. And what happens is they search our house. They find no drugs, they find no women, they find no people, they find nobody. If we were caught doing the things we're accused of, where the f 
Bank Once accounts. again, the girl can be seen in CCTV footage going outside to pick up a pizza shortly before the raid, which in the eyes of Andrew Tate fans, absolves the brothers of any wrongdoing entirely. It's as if the mere fact that they aren't rotting away in a jail cell is enough evidence of their innocence for some people. But those people may be forgetting the many times Andrew has bragged about paying off Romanian police, claiming he has the money and influence to tell the police to f*** off. After all, it is 40% of the reason Bro, it's so sad that you resort to spreading lies about the top G Andrew Tate just because he destroyed you in your guys' little discussion and make you look dumb, bro. Just get over it. I think that's the one time where, like, universally, pretty much everyone, including my fucking haters, agreed that Andrew Tate, my interlocutor, looked like a silly clown. He does have the capacity to straight up make um, people look good across the board. So for that, I, you know, I thank him. I am grateful. Like, even motherfuckers who are like, I absolutely despise, like, despise Hassan was like, but he, but I got to hand it to him. Like, he just rage quit. Well, he... No and they even moved out there. So the fact they aren't currently in jail doesn't hold a ton of value to me. I'd rather listen to the actual mother of the Romanian girl allegedly found at the compound, who insists Tristan preyed on her daughter's naivete to bring her out to the house in the first place. Unrelated, but while we're on the topic of Andrew's history with women, one lesser talked about video of Andrew from an unspecified date has drawn a fair amount of concern in light of the new human trafficking allegations, where we see Andrew verbally berating a woman and making her show off the bruises he gave her. Because I can't show it here, I'll just recite this transcript. And of course, I do have to give a trigger warning for abusive language. What are you moaning about, woman? Bruises. Bruises. Why? Because I've been beaten. Beaten with what? With what? Your hand. Because you're a jerk. Show me the bruises. One, two, three. I have an idea. Do you want to know my idea? The girl then walks away and locks a door, to which Tate yells, oh yeah, lock that door, you fuck. You knew I was going to beat the out of you. If you behaved, I wouldn't have to hit you. Just more non-concerning stuff from the guy who's publicly said this. But despite all the bans and allegations and news coverage, criminal investigations, Andrew Tate is still revered as an icon, idolized by both fans and a fellow like-minded grifters. It's important to note that over the past few years, Andrew has connected with a handful of infamous right-leaning pundits and online personalities. Brushing elbows with January Six Stop, dude. Come on, dude. What? Rushing out. Are you fucking kidding, dude? I was not there. I was not there on January six. Oh my god. I was not there at January 6th. That was Hank. He looks a lot like me, okay? <laughs> That's Hank Pecker. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. It's... Every single streamer that has watched the debate gave us on the W. Even the people I watch that don't like you, just confirm me you're absolutely correct about that? Yeah. Elbows with January 6th organizer Ali Alexander and conservative pundit Jack Posobiec, a known conspiracy theorist with a track record of making unsubstantiated claims for the sake of pushing a radical agenda. Andrew has also seen praise from professional liar Mike Cernovich, a man so Lord. infamous for his misogyny and plethora of violent language against women, I can't even read some- To be fair, like, Mike Cernovich has also, just like Andrew Tate, uh, talking about the merits of, like, uh, you know, violently sexually abusing your female partner so of these out loud. Another figure often brought up when discussing Andrew's political affiliations is Paul Joseph Watson. When he isn't vomiting out anti-immigration rhetoric to an army of neo skinheads, Paul has been known to pal around with Andrew Tate on Wait, more than Wasn't Oh my god. Wasn't Mike Cernovich's fucking thing gorilla mindset? Oh my god, another mindset guy. He did POA shit as well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Gorilla mindset. 
how to control your thoughts. All these motherfuckers, dude. Pitbull mindset, alpha dog mindset, gorilla mindset. Ooh, ooh, ooh. In one occasion, with each segment they shoot together somehow being more unhinged than the last. Women are just... Oh, can I say it? Yeah, I can say it. Women are useless in most situations. They're useless in Bro, I know why this motherfucker shaved his head. I've never seen... I mean, dude, your hairline was going, brother. You did that classic thing where you, like, do the undercut because, like, you realize the sides are gone already. Didn't work, so he was just like, all right, fuck it. Like, I could grow hair. That's the funniest part. One of the funnier fucking uh, uh, moments in, in the Andrew Tate saga that was short-lived, unfortunately, was when he literally did the, uh, when, he, when he said, like, well, I could, I, could have, I could have long hair if I want to. I'm just shaving by choice. I'm bald by choice. Yeah, okay. Combat situations are useless in, in any kind of physical situation, but they want to walk around, take all my attention, expect me to buy them drinks and buy them dinner, and then not have sex with me and call me their friend. I don't see the benefit in any of them. Andrew has also been chastised for his ties with UK anti Islam activist Stephen Yaxley Lennon, or Tommy Robinson, yep. describing Tommy him Robinson. as a solid guy with a good heart. According to a recent Guardian article, Andrew had the police call. I didn't read all that, and I'm not called on him in 2019 after showing up at the residence of Mike Stutchberry, a journalist who had previously spoken out against Andrew, an incident that came just days after Tommy Robinson did the same thing, a situation that reportedly caused Stutchberry's wife to suffer a panic attack and played a massive role in their decision to move out of the UK altogether. While Andrew may not posit himself exclusively as a political commentator, he's always left his beliefs out in the open. It's all a scam. Let me tell you something, man. When this corona thing was going on. Look at no, I'm not these mask wearers. Trump is a G. I want to emphasize the type of individuals he attracts and welcomes, because while railing against innocuous personalities like Danny Gonzalez or Ethan Klein, Andrew embraces the company of reactionary scam artists, even filling in as guest host of Infowars whenever Alex Jones is away, presumably losing tens of millions in court. It's worrying to me in the sense how Andrew opens the door for young, impressionable teenage boys with a lack of direction in their lives to fall down this pipeline of harmful ideology. By coming across as some well-meaning, motivational guru, Andrew earns a sense of credibility among unassuming viewers, those who may not be aware of his full story, opening the floodgates to a wave of more dangerous beliefs to be spread. He's like a Trojan horse of stupid takes. People say, well, don't have Tate as male role model, there's better ones. Where are they? There are no other male role models. Because to inspire the youth of men, you need to be aspirational. They have to look at you and want to be like you. And there's no other male role models that have had the tenacity or the aggressiveness to have such a fantastic life as I have. Before he got banned, I decided to put my theory to the test, setting up a brand new TikTok account and seeing how long it took to go from Andrew Tate to alt-right adjacent content. And after about an hour and a half worth of scrolling, I went from a completely blank slate to my For You page being flooded with nothing but Andrew and Tristan. Coming across the occasional Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Classic. Jordan Peterson video, everyone you would naturally expect from that crowd before finally landing on Conspiracy videos, Alex Jones, and a speech from notoriously homophobic Florida governor Ron DeSantis. God all from damn, nothing dude, but that algo is so sexy to me. I'm not even kidding. Which, by the way, remember, is quite literally the same as the fucking YouTube alt-right rabbit hole! Everything is the same. Everything. We're just reliving the same existence over and over again under different packaging. Every hour passes and a 60 second ad break comes and goes. And I tell you at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those fucking ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. And I tell you, you can also avoid those ads if you get gifted a fucking sub. If you're lucky, that is. But Twitch Prime is free. Here's the one minute ad break now. Okay. No, but for real though, this is... This is identical to the YouTube fucking rabbit hole, dude. The YouTube right-wing rabbit hole that ultimately ended up it, it, with, with serving you reactionary videos that went from PewDiePie to like, I don't know, some neckbeard uh, alt-light guy or a T-channel that's like right-wing focused. 
all the way to a essayist that is a neck-bearded fucking women-hating weirdo, all the way to other collaborative efforts made by that guy to a straight-up right-wing, uh, ultimately, a, a, like, an actually openly right-wing commentator, all the way to a fucking Nazi. That's always how it works. Sigma male edits of Andrew Tate with Subway Surfers graphics, confirming the existence of a pipeline that Andrew was very much a part of, at least before TikTok completely nuked his account, along with YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. Upon the yeah, it's 2015-2016 YouTube. We're in our 2015-2016 YouTube era. But at least we have, listen, at least we have like larger, more prominent voices in these spaces that no, never existed. You know what I mean? At least there's like a somewhat of a way. Now, obviously, ultimately, it doesn't matter. We're just like individual content creators. It doesn't fucking matter. But at least like there's a little bit of pushback this time around. So that's good. And that never really existed. In the, uh, it, like there was no safe space. There was no place where you could feel like, uh, you know, there were like-minded individuals on the internet. Uh, and, and a lot of people got trapped. But yeah. What? Past is almost so right. You guys got nothing but anti-wokeness now that Biden is elected. Numbers that will be glorious. I think, first of all, if I were to use like anti-wokeness as an argument, despite the fact that I do advocate for what you would otherwise consider woke causes, um, I would probably make a lot more money. Like anti-wokeness blew the up under Obama and it's going to blow up again. You know, that, that is definitely an area of, that is definitely an area that will, will make a lot of money, uh, for a lot of content creators. Look, be on the lookout for the pushback from uh, anti-social justice warrior uh, uh, style commentary again. That's that's what's going to blow the fuck up under under Joe Biden, because Joe Biden himself commits these microaggressions routinely. But then the uh, largely neoliberal media will overlook that and will rarely ever or say anything about that. But then apply these rigorous uh, and high and insane standards to like every other person that they've declared outside of that neoliberal bubble and uh, you will 1000% without a uh, without a shred of doubt you will see a lot of anti SJWs blow the fuck up and for those of you who say like I'm going to turn into Tim Pool my opinion has not changed throughout the year or like the my core principles have not changed throughout the years you might be uh, paying more attention to it and you might have an opportunity to hear me out but it's not like I went from you know, Republican to con uh, or a conservative person to a liberal person or a conservative person to a leftist. Like, I've been this kind of leftist for a very long time. A lot longer than you have been interested in politics personally. And I've been this kind of person back when you were probably a Nazi on the internet. You know what I mean? So just because your, your current point of view is now... You became le less like Tim Pool. You got more hair and you rarely wear headwear. True like neoliberal or some shit like that, where you align with the Democratic Party, uh, does not mean that like my position has uh, adjusted. Woke id Paul leftism blew up under Trump. What? id Paul leftism? No. The anti-SJW the anti rhetoric, the anti-SJW, like anti id Paul rhetoric on the right grew originally under the Obama administration. It grew partially under the Obama administration. Because under no, I didn't sound different. Um, I had a GoXLR back then, and now I have a Rodecaster. The Obama administration, people recognized like, oh, fuck, we have literally no power. We have no power in the political arena. Obama's not going to do shit. But we do have one area of power where we can kind of make material changes, like minor changes. What area is that? Oh, that area is culture. So people started uh, organizing their activism or whatever they uh, perceive to be activism around 
changing fucking uh, movies and and yelling about uh, you know TV shows and whatnot. Um, that started blowing the fuck up under Obama. We stopped focusing on like anti-imperialist protests. We stopped focusing on like banking regulation and and uh, you know advocacy in that realm. And the neoliberal uh, the neoliberal agenda on the political realm took root. Everyone started focusing on these like minor uh, these these like representative politics that that represented the end all be all of politics and that's that's pretty much it so there were a bunch of reactionaries that used that to shit on the left in its entirety and we're going to get back to that now yeah the only space that the left and i mean like the left the capital l left so it even includes like liberals and Democrats, right? Like the left side of the political uh, spectrum, the only area of power that they had was in the area, in the realm of art and culture. So they hyper-focused on the area that they could clean up as best as they could. So that's what they do. And that's what they're going to go back to. And there's going to be a lot of need and a lot of interest for a, a reaction to that. And that's where anti-SJW YouTubers come back into the fray so they can make it seem as though, so they can make it see, seem like, you know, the random, like, Tumblr kitties. And those people are going to, those people are going to uh, pay attention to others that have similar points of view that they do and find themselves at the throes of sharks who then feed them reactionary politics. This is exactly what happened with um, all of these centrist people that became alt-right. There are a lot of you in here, there are a lot of you in here right now, Like, that used to be that way. Why are you focusing on this irrelevant bullshit? I mean, it's irrelevant. Once again, chat. Once again, chat. Literally coming in and being like, uh -huh, this is irrelevant bullshit. Why are you focusing on it? Well, guess what? So we could watch it fucking a year later, okay? That's why. And by the way, I don't even think this is from December 19th, 2021. Because at that point, I, I believe I'd already moved into the new house. So this is probably, uh, this is literally an older video that was, oh, this happened, this react happened in May, 2021. So it's been more than a year. No, it says May, 2021. The yellow number is a heartbeat monitor. This guy's really gorgeous, amazing features and love the new haircut. Unsurprisingly, he was right there. Astounding how 30 years later, people still care about wokeness. I think the big thing about class being a part of social justice, many of the systems of control employed by control minorities are heavily class based. Relevant. It's irrelevant right now because. Oh, wait, the tweet says December 2020. Are we sure this is from 2021? It could be from 2020. No, December 2020 would be. No, 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 no. December 2020 would be like, I, I would have been fucking, the tweet is from then, but. Right now, uh, we're still U.S. Congress passed Alex Padilla, Gavin Newsom pick. There's Christmas emotes in the chat. I don't know. December 2020, the chat and the vid is Xmas. Still in the lame emotes. ducks. Yeah, session. look. Chat has Christmas emotes in the chat. Oh, no. It says, I've been calling for more nuance in this conversation for a year. 
Okay, that makes sense. The Id Bowl Wars are going to be fun. I've been calling for more nuances from two hours ago. Yeah, it's probably May. Yeah, it's 2021. It's, uh, tweet says two hours ago, but the original tweet says December, 20, uh, December 2020. No, the original tweet she posted was in December 2020, and then she re replied, it, uh, replied to it probably back in May. It's no longer going to be irrelevant when that's all you fucking talk about in the next four years. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. The reason why Id Paul is such a big driver in America is because people experience their racial or other identities to a much greater degree than class identities, which are pretty destroyed due to there being no class consciousness. There's a reason why the biggest mass protests in America. Black shatters rise up. <sighs> in recent years, has been stuff like BLM or even the Women's March. Yeah. Well, it's also the only area that you can organize. No, it's December 22nd. The uh, largely neoliberal media will... O oh my God. It is from December. Oh my God. You're wrong. You said this was from May 2021. Daily Dose, you're wrong. It is from December. God damn, Weeby. Okay. Malleable goals of neolibs and anti-SJWs from two years ago. That makes the precog even better, dude. Let's fucking go. Woo! Fucking called it. Sniped it. Scoped it. Laser-guided missile systems, baby. Goddamn! Goddamn! Maybe that's why motherfuckers are like, they lose their shit if they're like, oh, your takes on Ukraine were bad. Your political commentary is not astute. That's why, because they're like sick and tired of me being so fucking right all the time, dude. That's consistency. Yeah, I mean, I had this, yeah, I, I, I had this take even well before Biden won too. Obviously, like some are way easier locks. Others are not. Y'all should debate he would destroy you. Hassan, please predict when I will get a girlfriend, please. June 28th, 2023. It is written. Remember it. Okay, let's finish this uh, video though. And I got a majority of his internet presence being ripped away. Andrew went on to backpedal and really undermine the gruff, hyper misogynistic reputation we've all become familiar with. Acting like he never said any of the things he's said on camera. And I said that, look, a lot of people are confused because I'm trying to build men up and help men understand that they have a value too. Cause I think in the world today, not many men feel valuable. I think a lot of men are very, very sad and depressed. And I'm trying to encourage the men to feel powerful and feel, feel valuable. They think I'm trying to drag women down and that's not the case. Whether or not he'll return to these platforms in some capacity has yet to be seen. Individuals like Andrew Tate have a peculiar way of sticking around. While some defend his right to exist online, others rejoice at the mass exodus of his profiles. But what's not to be disputed is the lasting impact he's made on everyone who's been on the internet over the past few months. The Guardian article we discussed earlier paints a pretty worrying picture of the so-called legacy he's left, citing one woman to describing how her boyfriend's attitude and opinions changed dramatically after being introduced to Andrew's content. One teacher taking to Reddit to express how Andrew Tate has, quote, ruined her freshman boys, claiming students are refusing to do assignments if they're sourced by a woman. I had three boys refuse to read an article by a female author because women should only be housewives, she wrote. Another replying, I had some kids put Andrew as their role model on their student info questionnaires oh, God. this week. All the more reason and why Jail. he deserves to be analyzed. Jail those children! Analyzed and critiqued to the fullest, as his words serve as nothing more than a reactionary drivel for desperate and lonely individuals to latch on to. He speaks to the internal- I want to know what the woman version of this is. What is like the, the, like Andrew Tate for women? And I'm not talking about like the misogyny, so like your immediate, uh, you're going to think like, oh, like, 
you know, miss injury. No, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, like, what is, and it doesn't have to be like female dating strategy, obviously. I'm talking like, like what woman pops the fuck off? Like what? Because misogyny is what gets a lot of guys uh, hooked. Who, what would be like the girl boss version of this? That just like, it doesn't make sense, but they just like fucking skyrocket into success by promoting like a weird thing. Trisha Paytas, maybe? I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Gwyneth Paltrow, many of us in chat are wondering why you removed the Pulse monitor. I think you should address that for transparency's sake. Yeah. Wendy Williams, Kardashians, maybe Kardashians, but like not really, not really. Kardashians were like a media machine. TikTok is literally at war with Afuela TikTok. Call her daddy? I don't know. There was one on TikTok that got popular for fighting for man's rights. No, 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 no. What female content creator tackles the female consciousness and impacts them in a way that Andrew Tate impacts young men? That's what I'm trying to figure out. got to be like maybe like a female uh like uh, like you know makeup youtuber maybe i don't fucking know women aren't that easily malleable to be honest i mean no women fall for dumb shit all the time women literally fuck men regularly okay what do you mean they're not easily malleable like, they, literally, it's just a permanent L for women across the board. We smell bad. We're dumb as fuck. We say the dumbest shit. And women still consistently literally put the bar all the way to fucking hell and try to routinely uh, make themselves feel like their male partners are, are all that when we are not. So, no, that's I, I don't believe that. Okay. I Yeah, no, that's not real. Teenage girls aren't allowed to enjoy one thing that much without being made fun of so it doesn't exist for us. Hot girl Meg. Women went wild for that hot girl summer. Not problematic like Tay, but definitely had that influence. I could see that. The fact that you have to think about it this hard says a lot about how much less psychotic women are in certain ways. The threat of violence is integral to Tate's persona. And if you aren't going to find a female equivalent, well, it doesn't have to be about PUA stuff or patriarchy, obviously. That's what I was going to say. But also I was thinking about it and like it kind of proves that we're just really a male dominant community. Let's be real. That's the other reason why we can't even fucking come across like one individual content creator that's like that has had like staying power that is similar to that rhetoric you just spit is exactly why insecure men fly to Tate. What do you mean? What I said about uh, us men, us guys being kind of like fucking shitty all the time, but women still are like, uh, you know, lowering the bar and getting duped by us dumbasses. No, I mean, I don't think that that's Early caller daddy was just teaching toxic ass things to teenage girls, but it wasn't like as popping. Maybe Drew Afuelo? Person who's been popping off. Just pearly things. Alpha fucks, beta bucks. 
This person should be, should men be entitled to financial abortions? Just pearly things. This person has been absolutely popping off 24K subs in April. Now it's 310K. What is this? And so what a lot of guys find, they said 20 to 25% of marriages are sexless. And typically it's the woman holding out. Like guys want to have sex. And so what a lot of guys find, they said 20 to 25 no, this is like, uh, Jenna Marbles is a good example, kind of. Call her daddy was definitely massive, but I'd say it's more teenager, teenage girls JRE. Chat, Hassan just gave me the idea. All women in chat, follow me. I'm going to start that. Uh, it's Caroline Calloway? No, because Caroline Calloway is not that popping. Caroline Calloway is like very insulated you know what i mean we're talking andrew tate literally hit like andrew tate basically fucking hit mainstream permanence without ever being on mainstream doja kind of did the same thing she pushed herself super hard after Moo went viral yeah but i guess she was like Birth control must be banned. Opinion, the only way to do that is to get rid of birth control. I don't think it'll ever go back unless mm, that's, that's gone. That's an interesting point. Because yeah. that's when you see everything switch. If you look at the divorce mm. rate graph, like as soon as divorce spiked at the same time, that was when birth more women were getting on birth control. Because oh, you're taking away... Because that's the thing. Like Society takes away the consequence for everything women do. Like We have no consequences for anything. If we sleep around, we don't get pregnant because of birth control. Even if we do get pregnant, we have abortion. Even if we do get pregnant and keep the kid, he pays child support. Mm. Even if we do get pregnant, get married, get divorced, we get alimony. Bro, this is literally not for women, okay? You're fucking delusional if you think that this, is, this content is for women. Are you out of your fucking mind? No, you went and you found a woman saying the same shit that Jordan Peterson and, and, uh, and Andrew Tate would say. This person is literally not for women, okay? This is, you know what this is? This is Candace Owens, okay? This is white Candace Owens uh, specifically doing... Uh, misogynistic content for men so that men can feel fucking uh, good and positive. Yeah, you went and you found a pick me, dude. What the fuck? <sighs> anyway, do you believe that there aren't women that agree with her? Are you crazy? No, but this content isn't specifically for women, weirdo. That's what I'm saying. Of course, of course, there are plenty of fucking misogynistic women, dude. What are you talking about? They're all in here right now. What do you what do you mean? No, I meant like. No, I, I, I'm. I, I <laughs> Emma Chamberlain, maybe. Okay, okay, let's fucking wrap this up. I haven't finished this goddamn video. It was a really good video, by the way. Biases and insecurities of an entire generation and thrives off attention both negative or otherwise, which means he isn't really going anywhere anytime soon. What on earth?